So with that quick recap, um, I want to hand over to Frank Rubino, who's going to demonstrate the power of MarkLogic's data hub and some of our smart mastering capabilities. So uh, over to you, Frank. Unmute. Good morning, everyone. Uh, really nice to see you. Uh, I'm going to start uh, by by talking. I'm going to show you a, a few slides uh, in case you haven't seen enough. Um, let me share my screen here. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm I'm going to focus a lot on on mastering and on our, our mastering, one of the mastering tools that we provide uh, as part of our data hub suite of tooling and, and frameworks. But what I, want to, um, what I want to start out with is really just talking about how the foundation of all this stuff is this MarkLogic data hub. And um, I'm not sure uh, how many folks are familiar with this, this particular picture. But it is the meta pattern, I would call it, uh, for what we do as a company, as a platform with data integration. And um, it's particularly tuned into our uh, capabilities in the sense that the basic workflow is to take data from the left hand side of this picture. That's just kind of going to be all of your data sources from your enterprise as is, pull them into the data hub, which is uh, going to be represented as this, this kind of central pill, this kind of central stack of uh, capabilities here, um, and curate it and deliver it out the right hand side with your applications um, and with uh, with your APIs that want to provide this data to people who want to consume it. Now, one of the we do a lot in the middle portion of this data hub. But one of the things that I really want to focus on is uh, smart mastering. And that is the capability that MarkLogic has to exploit its indexes to be able to um, um, uh, find, to be able to resolve uh, data duplication issues and data quality issues, and also to provide uh, a an audit trail uh, of metadata that shows how that uh, how those resolutions occurred and uh, how you, and and also provides a pathway back in case some regulatory situation forces you to undo the uh, the changes that that you made while mastering. So before I get too far into the weeds, um, what I want to do is just set up a little quick demo and show this to you. So the first thing that I want to do is set the scene. Uh, this is a demo that we put together because we discovered that a lot of our customers across many different industries uh, do have people data problems or data challenges, let's call them. Uh, in, in this sense, uh, so in this case, we created a, an HR 360 use case which is kind of a fictional use case, but I think you'll see that it, it may apply to some of your, your, uh, your use cases. And it's about a fictional insurance company called Mountaintop Insurance that grows through acquisition. But you could also think of it as kind of a, a, a government agency that, that, that gets new missions and new teams and, um, and has to integrate all that new information together to be able to align, in this case, we want to align job openings with the talent of the people in our HR database. Um, and we need to be able to do that across all the data silos that start occurring as we, uh, as we get new companies, as we get new uh, data sources online. So um, we want to be able to provide our HR department with this way of looking at the data that's not kind of scanning back and forth across all the all the screens. So what are we going to do? We're going to load this data as is into the data hub. And I'll show you a little bit about how to do all this with the data hub. And then we're going to curate it 
into this view that we're going to be able to, we're going to take all these sources, curate them into a unified view, and then uh, kind of um, while we're doing that, we're going to be modeling these key business objects or entities and the relationships between those objects that we want to query across as we provide our kind of holistic dashboard. And one of the things we're going to be having to do there is deal with the, the, the issue of duplicates. So I'm going to just, just start with my, with my demo and switch into this application. So this is the, can, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping my video is, is clear and good here. This is the, okay. So this is the, um, this is the landing page for our data hub central community edition tool. And this is a tool that helps you build data hubs in kind of a no code, low code way. Uh, it focuses very much on visual interactive data modeling. I'm going to log in here because Mark Logic, you know, has security. And when I log in, I get to uh, a data modeling screen. Let's close that. Okay. And my data modeling screen, um, I've already set up. Um, I've already set up a data model here, uh, which is very easy to do. This is kind of like a interactive canvas here where I can, I can create um, uh, new business entities, you know, and um, just by just by interactively, you know, clicking, and um, uh, I can then add some properties to these these new things, and I can go, you know, uh, and I can begin to build out a data model. Um, I can also add relationships from things to other things. You know, we'll call it has opening. And uh, I might have many openings for my thing or, or whatever. So I can begin, you can see how you can begin to sort of build out a data model. And circles and lines here are for uh, are, are a pretty um, easy metaphor for most people up and down the chain of MDM to be able to understand. So this is, um, this is a process you might get into with uh, your business stakeholders, for instance. Let me just uh, delete that. So... I don't get bothered by it later. Um, and so we can see here that, for instance, I've got this fully um, articulated employee entity where I've got a bunch of properties, um, like a first name and last name. And I'm going to have to bring in some data to, uh, to map against this employee entity. The next thing I do is, um, is go over to my uh, upload screen. And you can see here that I've got a bunch of data sources that I've that I've uploaded. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of one of them, and show you uh, how that works here. So, I guess just gotten rid of one of the data sources I've loaded. And here um, now, recall that we're talking about Mark Logic's um, multi multi model capabilities, flexible data model. So what I've got here is uh, I've got some source data for my for my uh, HR data hub, and they exist here as uh, flat files on the disk. Um, um, you could also integrate this with with other sort of uh, uh, um, um, data with with other data movement um, kinds of um, um, architectures like. Like maybe you have Spark, or maybe you use MuleSoft, like we talked about last week, or, or one of those other tools. But here I'm just picking files from disk. And you'll notice I've just picked a bunch of JSON files. Uh, I've got other data on here for uh, some of these other data sets. Like I've got some CSV files, for instance, and I could even, I could take those in as well. But for now, I'm just going to pull these data files in just to show you how it works. And call it Postal Employees. Spell it right. Yeah. Okay. And when I save it, I'm going to get a little, um, get a little uh, um, addition here to my table with my my new data source in there. So now that I've got all my data loaded into my data hub from its as is original sources, I want to go and um, I want to talk to you about how we integrate that. So I mentioned before that um, that we've created this, this data model. 
and we've done it sort of graphically and, and just the way it makes sense to uh, think about the business problem, right? I have employees that have specialties and we want to align them with job openings that have these particular focus areas. Um, that's the logic of this. So when we integrate our, um, when we integrate our, our data, let's pull in this, uh, let's pull in this, well, before I even do that, let me head over to show you what we've already got integrated here. So let's get rid of this. Remember, I just, I haven't pulled in that coastal employee data yet, but I do have some, some data in here. And you'll notice that it's circles and lines. It's a graph that looks kind of like the model that I had. And if I, uh, if I click on some of, the, um, some of the nodes in this graph, you can see that I've pulled in some data that has, that has attributes. Um, I've even, uh, I've got um, specialty areas that have, um, that have job openings attached to them. Uh, I can page through this and look at it in a kind of a paged, uh, paged fashion. But what's, what's more interesting here is that I want to use MarkLogic's powerful querying to be able to focus in on one particular employee who is looking for a new position in the, in the company. So uh, I've been told that um, Adriana Finn, I'm an HR specialist, I'm told that Adriana Finn is looking for uh, a new role in the company. So let's take a look at, uh, at Adriana Finn. So here's, here's her personnel record. Um, she's got this engineering resume and she has a very good job review. She has a, um, this product skill set in, in general ledger. And um, remember I said that we can bring in all kinds of different data. I've even sort of brought in for Adriana, I brought in a photo. So we can even bring in binary information and tie the, them all together during the, this harmonization process that I'm about to show you. So, okay, so, um, so I'm fa finding out about Adriana Finn, but before I'm able to do anything to help Adriana, I have, uh, I have to integrate a whole new data set because we've just acquired the Coastal Insurance Company. So how am I going to uh, acquire, how am I going to integrate that new coastal data? So I'm going to head back to my integrate tab here. And on here, you'll notice this, uh, this kind of data pipeline, which is a, a familiar kind of model of the way that we think about uh, a step oriented data flow for, for uh, automating these data transformations that we're going to do. So that one of the things we're going to do here is um, we actually want to come over here and, and work from this page. We're going to, we're going to take a look at our, um, our uh, employee mapping here. So what I've done here is I'm, I'm now into the part of working with data in Mark Logic that allows us to take an arbitrary data uh, file that's come in, which is in any format, any schema, understand that schema, and then take that source schema and map it to a target schema. Um, and we can do this incrementally without worrying about, you know, changes to either one of those uh, schemas and still be able to find all the data and understand what we did to it. And um, the thing that we're, we're looking at here is the interface that allows us to map all of that coastal employee data that I pulled in as JSON files into our new sort of employee canonical structure. And um, you'll see here that I have stuff like, um, I have to do things like, for instance, I have a, a target field that uh, a property is called first name in camel case. It's the words all spelled out, um, nice and human readable. And I'm gonna have to map this uh, source property called F underscore name to first name. And that's fairly straightforward. You'll, you'll, you'll probably have seen that a lot of times in data mapping and, and, and things you have to do. Uh, same with employee ID. Um, some of these things map straight over like email, email. Um, but but some, in some cases, I have to do a little bit of um, data cleansing, uh, data cleanup or reformatting. Um, for instance, here, I've got to apply a, a function to the incoming um, uh, competency 
structure that I'm going to be getting from my source data. And um, I have a menu of functions that I can apply that are built in here. And um, if I don't find one here that I need, um, that I can chain together to get the desired result, I can always write one and have it uh, show up in this list. So um, let me get out of this. Um, and um, one of the other things you'll you'll um, you'll note also is, well, we're kind of lucky here in that our date worked, but some, but often I think people find that as they're doing this kind of mapping, it's dates that really grab, <laughs> trip them up and that they really have to work with. Dates are never clean. Dates are never consistent. Um, so anyway, so this is our mapping. Um, this is our really our mapping plan. And um, to run this mapping, what I'm going to do is um, just uh, just map it with this uh, with this dialog. I hit a button, I hit a check mark, uh, I, I click run, and um, I've now got 40 employees in my in my master set here. And when I go and explore um, Fin again, I've still got my search my view constrained to the Fin search term. I noticed that there's a second fin. And um, this particular fin has a coastal.com email address. And this fin has a mountaintop.com email address. But you know, they have the same physical address. And they have um, they have the same mobile phone number. If I scroll down here, 6665. And yeah, 6665, it's the same thing. Um, I can sort of take a look here and see uh, what has happened. Uh, what is the history of this particular fin entity that I've, that I've, that I've uh, brought into my database and harmonized? I get, a, I get this whole timeline of, of activities. And if I uh, click on one of them, for instance, I can get some additional metadata about, for instance, the user who, um, who created this, uh, this initial fin document and, and where it came from, what its source data was. So this is a, a very powerful way of, um, of auditing your data as it goes through your master data management um, uh, processes. And uh, the other thing that it's very useful for is for, um, is for merging these, these data. So let me show you how we do the interactive merging because that's what I started out saying I would show you. Uh, so we took a, a little bit of a byway, but I think it was, it was important to set the scene here. So we have two fins, we have two data sets with duplicate people in them. Um, so we're gonna start to set up um, our matching and merging sets, matching and merging processes, which are the core of MarkLogic Smart Mastering. So when I set up matching, I'm going to decide which properties in my, in my records are important uh, for me to uh, consider as I decide which records are duplicates. And for instance, I've got this first name property. So I, I'm, I'm basically saying in this list of properties, which are the properties that I'm deciding are important, I care about the last name, the first name, and the mobile number. If I have those three properties aligning across records, I'm pretty sure that's the same person. Um, but notice I say pretty sure. And that's an important aspect of smart mastering too because we're not making absolute decisions. We're sort of saying we have confidence that these things are the same person, but in case our confidence betrays us and it turns out that these aren't the same, peop these aren't the same people after all, we, do, we have all the metadata we need to go and recreate the initial scenario. So let me show you that in action because that's kind of cool. So first of all, I've got the properties I care about. Uh, if, I, if I have a property that I care about, I'm basically gonna say, how do I wanna compare it? MarkLogic comes with a bunch of algorithms that can, compare, um, that can compare property values. And 
in this case, we're doing exact string matching, but we have a couple of other built-in ones, including one which I really love, which is double metaphone, which is um, the ability to make sort of phonetic uh, phonetic comparisons across uh, across different entity properties. And yeah, so the exact string matching is the one we're gonna we're gonna use here. And we're going to say, okay, if if my property, if my first name properties match exactly, I'm going to uh, I'm going to assign a score to that, and the score that I'm going to assign is five. It's an arbitrary number that I come up with, and you'll see how those numbers factor into this in a second. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with last name, where you notice I'm I'm also doing an exact string match there, and mobile number an exact match. Um, the last name and the mobile number I consider a little bit more important. Um, the probability is higher if those those two properties match. So I'm going to give them higher weights. They have higher scores. So if I if I match all three of these things, I'm going to come up with a final score of 25, 10, 10, 5, 25. Um, to make life easy, I'm going to create a, a match threshold where I only care if all three of these match. Obviously, I could say, okay, I'm gonna, I, I could do a 20, I could make a threshold of 20. And in that case, I really don't care about first names so much. I really care about last names and mobile numbers and only the records which, um, which have uh, last names and mobile numbers which match will be um, will be considered matching records. So this is all this is all very good. So I've got this uh, threshold which I've got a potential match uh, and I've got a 25 uh, score which is going to be the addition of these particular uh, field weights here. Now once I decide I have matches, I have to do something with those matches. So I, I have this merge step and in this case I have this default merge strategy which is which is going to uh, which is going to take the um, take the differing values from the pro from from uh, properties which don't match in uh, in in a duplicate scenario and create arrays for those values and put those in the record um, and you'll see exactly what I mean when I actually run this. So now that I've got my matching and merging you know, uh, scenarios set up, I'm going to run it. Just going to run these steps. And um, you'll notice that when the step ran, it provided me with a couple of notifications up here. And when I click on these notifications, I'm brought to this match and merge uh, workspace, which is this interactive workspace where uh, I can decide what I want to do with these particular um, with these particular matching records, and I've got uh, obviously I've done this before, so I've got a, I had another record fin record in the in the system. But you'll notice that um, the fins that I was looking at before, where I had these um, coastal emails and these uh, mountaintop emails, those are non-matching properties. And what the merge scenario is going to do is put those properties together in an array so that I have all of the original property, uh, I have all the original values in my merge document. Um, and I have also all of the uh, information I need to go and, and unmerge the document if I need to. So let's, um, let's merge this. Let, let me merge this document. And let's go back and look at our explore graph. And we see now that we have one fin employee, not two. So if we look at this fin employee, we're going to see that I, as I mentioned before, we do have arrays of non-matching values where the values didn't match, and where the values did match, they were just carried over as is. Like for instance, the address, um, the first name of uh, Adriana and her last name. And we have our profile pick in here. Uh, so we still have uh, an image of her that we can verify. Yes, that's her. And um, a number of other of these, uh, these kinds of uh, uh, values that were 
non-matching were brought together uh, in arrays. So this is great. Um, this is really cool. But what has happened now is that, um, well, before I do the unmerging part, I do want to show you one other great thing about the way we're able to use graphs. Um, remember, the whole point of this is to be able to align Adriana Finn with a new job. She has general ledger skills. Now, if I expand, if I control click on, on this general ledger skill, I get a little, um, a little pop-up menu that lets me expand the general ledger con concept. And what happened there was that under the hood, MarkLogic expanded the query, uh, a semantic query about the general ledger skill set and pulled in all the related nodes in the, in the graph about general ledger and gave us a much fuller picture of Finn's place in the organization. So Finn now, we know that Finn has this general ledger product skill, but we also see there's a couple of other job openings that have that general ledger focus. So there's a, there's a teacher job opening. Is that a good match for Finn? I don't know. Her resume is an engineering resume, which we can actually even examine here because we pulled in this, uh, we pulled in the full text of the resume of her resume data. And, and maybe what it, what it looks like here is that the job opening for senior quality engineer is maybe a really good target for Finn to go, uh, to go for in a new, in a search for a new role. So in this way, you know, we can align, um, we can find the relationships between our business entities and we can make important business decisions about how to align people because we've got this, this data that's, um, now what if we had the other fin in the graph, um, we, we would have a slightly more confusing situation trying to align her. So that's how mastering has helped us. That's how this graph search has helped us. And I mentioned before that, hey, there might be these issues where uh, we might not necessarily uh, want to have, uh, we, we might discover that there are two fins, in fact. So what we might do here is um, unmerge our fin and get back to the state that we were in. And because we've got all this data, which I'm gonna show you right here, this is all the raw data in the fin record. So. This, this shows you how the data is represented in a document on, on, in MarkLogic's uh, database and how, um, how we've represented and captured all of the data that we, uh, that we use to merge the two FIN records together, which we had merged. So, okay, we've got all the URIs and we've got the metadata about the merging. We've got some triples um, serialized in this document that describe some of the artifacts, the data artifacts that we created that allow us to link all this stuff together. So, um, so now what we can do is if we're back here in Explorer, we can use all that great data to um, just provide this little unmerge easy button. So <clears throat> at this point, I'm like, okay, I know that this, these two fins are different, made a mistake. Now I'm gonna unmerge it. And now I'm back to having two fins. And that's, um, that's essentially, you know, what the, the ma mastering and merging I wanted to show you is. Um, one more thing I will tell you is that um, because of all, the, all of our um, knowledge about the way these, these data connect, we're able to provide um, a, a SQL uh, API. So let's, let's just sort of take a look at, let's just look at this for a second. Let's start for a let's, let's take off this where clause and let's run this. And so you notice this simple little SQL query that I, I wrote and I'm, and I'm running in MarkLogic's query console is now giving me all a, a, a tabular view of all the employees that I, I just entered in there. And I can do queries like you saw, I had the where clause there and we can get as elaborate as we want. Um, but, um, but we've got this view here that we can then 
visualize in a, in a, in a BI um, dashboard or, or whatever else we might need to use SQL and ODBC to connect to. Um, so that's kind of it. And I'm, I'm interested now to, to, to take some questions if you have them, if that's what we want to do, Phil, or uh, I'm not sure what, how you envision the next uh, part of this. Yeah, I mean, there's one question that's just come through on the chat from uh, Suresh, which is, um, if there are two different properties in two different uh, data sets from two different um, databases, um, what's the solution there that, um, that MarkLogic would, would employ? Well, if you have um, two data sets, right, from two companies' databases, that to me is uh, analogous to the mountaintop data, which we originally brought in, and then those all of those uh, coastal data files, which I brought in, which were all of those JSON files. So you would bring those two data sets in, and here on this integrate, um, in the integrate workflow, you would map each of those data sets to the canonical uh, model, which you we created here in our um, in our connect workflow. Yeah. So that's kind of how we would do that. And and the great thing about MarkLogic is you can see those different properties as you ingest that data, and therefore yeah. you can then make your canonical model that that will include all the properties of all the data that you have within the DB. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And and also, um, one thing I, I hadn't shown is that uh, we also have this grid view. And remember I showed you the uh, the resumes? So I know that somebody went to school in Dublin. Oh, that was Finn. Uh, and I'm very interested in taking a look at that. Uh, that is the resume of Adriana Finn right there. So I've, I've got also, not only am I indexing all of that, property that that property value kind of hierarchical data i've also just indexed full text and i can just search on the full text even before i i, I build the structures that um uh that provide us with this sort of thing so it's very powerful in that sense yeah yeah, yeah no, and i think an Another really interesting thing as well is that um, when you're talking about merging that data, if you think company A's property is more likely to be correct than company B, you can even yeah. choose to weight the data more from one field to another. So if you yes. think a financial data coming in is, is more accurate to have the bank account correct than if yeah. uh, the HR system is, yeah, then you can weight that as well with, with more advanced things. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And one other thing I just want to mention when when Frank brought up the, the SQL view there, remember that we're not storing that in a relational table. This is still stored as JSON or XML in, in Mark Logic. We're just projecting it out as a table. So you've still got all of the flexibility of the multi-model, but you can actually see it as SQL. Exactly. Cool. Wonderful. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for you know, answering uh, the question of Philip and Frank. Uh, I still have uh, a second question on the same. Uh, so yeah, like it, actually, you mean to say that uh, the kind of, kind of canonical model will have the both the properties from the both the you know operational databases. Let's say there are two companies, right? One company acquires another one, yeah. the cost, whatever. Yeah. And and let's say. Uh, the, the acquiring company is in the US, so they have an SSN number. And yep. the company in another country, which is having some other thing, which is not necessary SSN number because that is not in the US. So uh, yep. when, when you build a canonical model, so would you have this both the fields? Yeah, I mean, you're bringing up, I think what I understand your question to have to do with is, is something I'm showing right here, which is um, the fact that, you know, with, with, with these different systems of record, you, you wind up with different I, IDs for the same business entity and different, um, um, even different ID schemas, right? So here you can see, here's um, an employee ID, a merged employee ID, um, field, which is an array, which contains the, um, 
contains the employee ID values from the, the different source systems. So those will still be in the record. And, and as I had shown before also, um, when you get the, um, when you get, you, you've got the ability to take a look at the, the source documents always. You can preserve them in the staging database, which we've done here, and uh, take a look at them, um, take a look at the original source. Like for instance, I could do this, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm sort of interested in this, in what merged here. If I'm, if I'm doing like my, my Mark Logic Ninja skills, well, these aren't even really ninja skills. I could do this. Um, and uh, that's a quick, uh, quick interjection. The uh, it wouldn't matter though where whether they are coming from different systems, right? That's where the weight comes in, right? So if you are putting your weight of ten, for example, on on the name, and if they are coming from different systems, then the the if if they have different names then obviously they are different they're different persons right but yes. if they have, if they have the same name that will show up in your margin um uh, uh properties or weight that you actually find and you can come over that that stuff that you show so right yeah, and, I, and i think the question here as well is if you've got an ssn number in one record and say it's a uk record in the other system and you don't need an ssn number maybe you've got a government id from the UK record as well. So you could model it as government ID and store whichever both properties in there, or you could yep. keep them separate and just have the SSN for now. And when you want to add another government ID, you could create a new property. Yeah. But the nice thing as well with Mark Logic is you model as you go. We're storing all of this data as is. And when you're ready, you model it and bring and, and update it. In that case, do you and I you and I use your SSN because you know that the, the UK doesn't have the SSN. So you won't use it as part of your, your merging uh, criteria. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, um, you can take these rules, right? The, the mass, the mastering rules. Um, these matching rules can be custom. They can have logic in them. Um, they can be whatever you need them to be. Um, I'm just, I showed a simple case where we, we did a direct out of the box kind of comparison, but you could write this logic and said, well, if this record has social security, let's not, we're not a social security number or a social security property. We're, we're going to, we're going to use a different uh, matching algorithm for it, for instance. Yeah. Like I think that's survivorship kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've also done that for some CDC use cases where, um where you have uh you have to wait for uh wait for all the parts of a of a record to arrive in the data hub before you start putting it together and and um and creating the um creating the view that you need of it uh the co the, the holistic yeah, view. When, when i when i worked for optum and we implemented mark logic and stuff we had similar use case because we were dealing with patient information right so I, so you have when you move from one company to the next company you have the same name you are the same person but you will have a different patient id because you actually switching uh, uh providers or switching different uh insurance yes yeah. right so those right. those use cases you come across a lot within healthcare okay wonderful thank you guys so